Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. Well, we have a bombshell of a video today from Dave Ramsey. All right, Dave Ramsey is coming out and exposing the truth about Kamala Harris and also he's coming out and he's really supporting Donald J. Trump. Okay, if you don't know who Dave Ramsey is, he has one of the most popular shows, radio shows, podcast, YouTube channels in the world, all right? And he talks mainly about finance, but he also lately has been speaking up about politics and about Donald J. Trump, okay? And before we dive in, we are going to read the Bible and pray because God comes first, amen? Comment amen down below. And I wanted to just tell you guys, Dave Ramsey literally saved my life, all right? I have a very, very strong personal connection to Dave Ramsey. I started listening to Dave Ramsey when I was in a very dark, depressing time in my life, uh, mainly financial, but it also was really hurting me mentally as well. I was in credit card debt, <clears throat> which if you know anything about Dave Ramsey, he teaches people how to get out of debt. And for whatever reason, I started listening to his show and I cut up my credit cards. I said, you know what? I had a change of heart. That's what it was. I had a change of heart. I cut up my credit cards, paid them off, worked. I got three jobs and stopped going out to eat, stopped going out to part. I was a partier before. And I, you know, Dave Ramsey just was there for me, you know, from his show. And so he really taught me how to get out of debt, build up his savings, and to the point where I even purchased my first home. So I owe, I was literally just telling my friend yesterday, like I owe my life to Dave Ramsey. So when he came out to support Trump, I was like, I have to make a video about this because I truly do owe a lot to Dave Ramsey. So let's read the Bible, let's pray, and then let's get started with the video. And by the way, Dave Ramsey is a Christian man, so gotta, you know, a lot of his principles are about Christian faith. Okay, we're going to read a, this Bible reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Comment amen down below, my friends. We are quite literally walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I mean, Donald J. Trump nearly got assassinated. He, in the words of Trump, he should have been dead. He went up there at the Republican National Convention and I said, I should not be here with you guys tonight. I should be dead. He said, I should not be here. And the whole crowd chanted, yes, you should. Yes, you should. Because everybody knew that God was not yet done with Donald J. Trump. Let's dive in. Let's bring on Dave Ramsey onto the show, guys. All right, so here's Dave Ramsey joining Laura Ingram on Fox News, let's tune in, guys, to reveal the truth. God, I love Dave Ramsey, brother. Well, the Harris campaign sells good vibes and taco recipes because Lord knows they can't sell this dog of an economy. And although celebs may be on Zoom singing her praises, Kamala Harris and young voters, well, can they use good vibes to pay their rent or buy their food or get ahead? I'm 20 years old. Why is a one bedroom apartment $600, $1,600? Rent prices is outrageous. And then these jobs, they're bare minimum jobs. I really waited my whole life to grow up and do this. My parents are Gen X's and they've never like owned a house at all. And there were many times where we were homeless. I kept a full time job the whole time I was homeless. It's just that everything is so expensive nowadays mm. that what do you prioritize? Mm. Like, do you prioritize eating? over having at home. We have to make three jobs just to make ends meet. And that's not fun money. That's money so that we're not homeless. Well, we know one thing too is that Kamala Harris also called young people stupid, right? She literally does not care about young people. Look at this. These are the people I, they, this, 
This should really offend a lot of young people. Listen to this, guys. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. <laughs> that is why we put them in dormitories. And they have a resident assistant. Absolutely ridiculous. Let's hear what Dave Ramsey has to say, guys. This is heartbreaking to hear. Uh, the question is, do these young people really think a President Harris will revive their prospects with policies like price controls? Joining me now, Dave Ramsey, personal finance expert, host of the fabulous The Ramsey Show. Dave, great to see you tonight. Okay, price controls. I love Dave Ramsey, guys. This is so cool to see him actually go on Fox News, I believe, for the first time ever. Talk to young people well, for a moment. Is that going to fix this problem, dig them out of that financial hole? No, because it's artificial. Uh, it's not sustainable because it's artificial. If you just put a lid on something, and if you want to explore what really happens, just go back to the 1970s. We tried it. There was a whole movement for price controls across everything because inflation was out of control and rampant, just like it is now. And uh, so it's been tried. It does not work. What works is to flood the market with supply. Lots of oil means lower oil prices. That's what Donald Trump wants. Drill, baby, drill. Yeah, guys, this is huge for Trump. Lots of labor means lower labor prices. Lots of whatever means lower prices. It's a simple supply-demand curve. It's called economics, and it's called the free market uh, economics. When you insert government in it and try to artificially cramp it down, it simply does not work because you can only hold that hose for so long until the pressure builds up and it blows on you. Well, President Trump was talking today about how you know, we, we have flooded the market with low-wage workers, but unfortunately they're illegal aliens or asylum seekers, migrants, and so that, that has artificially kind of jacked up these some of these employment numbers but the washington post makes an important point regarding the retail sales numbers that came out today dave which showed a one percent increase which a lot of people think that's good it's increasing but the top 20 percent of households account for roughly 45 percent of overall spending wow and low and middle income households are really feeling the brunt of high inflation the lion's share of u.s consumer spending coming from the wealthiest consumers yeah i mean think of all the illegal aliens flooding the job market right flooding rent prices right you 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 want to rent a house you want to go rent somewhere well guess what if you got a bunch of illegal aliens living in your you know in your neighborhood well there's just there's just gonna be less houses so or less apartments whatever condos the prices are just gonna go up because there's there's more demand Dave, given what yeah. you hear on a daily basis, yeah. does that surprise you at all? Well, let's, let's also understand the statistic there. It went up 1%. It wasn't 1% in number of units sold. It was in dollar volume. What's that mean? It means the price went up. <laughs> wow. You just exposed Kamala Harris, guys. It doesn't mean the economy's booming. It just means the cost of the good went up one percent. Actually, it went up a lot more than one percent because the number of units is down, and, and so that's a misnomer. That's misreported. It acts like the economy is booming in retail or something. And yes, we are seeing this disparity between the haves and the have-nots getting wider and wider and wider, which traditionally you see as you see more and more government intervention in the economy. When you let the free market run and you leave it alone, this is a battle of ideas. When you let the free market run and leave it alone, it will find equilibrium. And it, will, it works to the advantage of most everyone when you do that. When you insert government in it and you say, I'm going to do price controls, I'm going to protect you from high grocery prices, it's simply not sustainable and it causes more problems than not. All we got to do is go back and look at the mess of the supply chain in COVID and see that exact thing, same thing unfolding there. Uh, and so if you want to help the little man, all right, let CBS. the market run. Yeah. Well, some of the dumb ideas they have out there is just take cold showers, Dave. Skip a meal. <laughs> skip a meal and take cold showers. That's, that's yeah. the answer. And, and we'll go back to price controls. I would love to hear Dave Ramsey's thoughts on Kamala Harris's policy where she wanted to just give out $25,000 for people to use for first-time homebuyers. Like, 
that also, the same principles that Dave Rams was talking about, that's also just gonna flood the market with more demand and less supply because all of a sudden there's gonna be, oh, tw we all have 25,000 more bucks. And it's not gonna just raise the prices by houses by $25,000, it's gonna raise it by a lot more because there's gonna start to be bidding wars. Everyone, you know, now all of a sudden, because you go down the street, there's a house goes up for sale in your neighborhood. How many people are realistically putting offers on that house? Maybe two, three, maybe five offers if the house is like priced really well. What happens when there's a hundred offers on there? There's the, the seller's gonna, okay, let's do new counter offers. Okay, who's gonna bid the highest? And boom, all of us, that sets the new price, all right? People don't realize, especially Kamala Harris, because she's so unrelatable, she's so out of tune with real estate. Like she, she's, she's an idiot. Tim Waltz doesn't own any real estate. He doesn't own, even own a single stock, all right? These people, they, they're, the economy, this is horrible for the economy. And when you have people who just all of a sudden can, you know, start putting on offers, it's like the seller doesn't even decide the price of the house, it's the buyers who do, right? Because the buyers just start outbidding each other. There you go. Now, cold showers aren't bad for you necessarily. I'd hate for anyone to have to take one. But if you take a cold shower to save money and then stop by Starbucks and pick up a $12 coffee, you kind of defeated yourself. <laughs> guys, you guys, if you guys don't watch the Dave Ramsey show, you guys got to check it out. Now, I wanted to bring on Dave Ramsey to talk about inflation and the higher cost of living and just, you know, exactly how Americans are being affected by this. And, you know, in my opinion, it's a direct result of the Biden and Harris administration. Let's, let's tune in, guys. This is remarkable in its own right, too. American household debt going past $16 trillion to the end of June for the first time ever. Crazy. Uh, driven by an increase in auto loans, credit card balances, and most of all, mortgage borrowing for your home. Dave Ramsey's a personal finance expert, author of the book, Baby Steps Millionaires. Dave but hey, if you're, Kamala, if you're a Kamala Harris fan, hey, just student loan forgiveness. Hey, forgiveness, 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 right? Why does it really matter? It's good to see you again, welcome here. This is your deal. You hate debt. You've been waging war against personal <laughs> debt for decades. Dave, they're not listening to you. I'm on the full Dave Ramsey plan, guys. I do not believe in debt, all right? Got my card paid for. I don't got a credit card. I don't, I don't got debt besides my home. Well, it's tight out there. Uh, folks are really, really scared. And uh, what this is a sign of is they're reacting poorly to the situation. Because here's the thing, if you don't lower your lifestyle to be within your income, even given all the inflation and even all the pressures, I mean, I filled my truck up and about passed out yesterday. You know, it's real out there. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know how people are surviving right now and actually affording groceries and gas, guys. It's nuts, though. The, uh, uh, if you don't lower your income, below your outgo, it's not sustainable. I mean, you can't just add credit card debt every year and not address this situation. As an individual person, you can't do that. I mean, you can't keep borrowing like you're in Congress. I hate credit cards. I will never, ever use a credit card again. I will never go into debt again, ever. I only buy what I can afford. And that's what we should be doing, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Hasn't stopped them yet, though. Uh, Dave, as you mentioned, this credit card balance has increased by $46 billion. That's the largest seen by the Fed since 1999. Americans opened 233 million new credit card accounts, the most since 2008. That means they're looking for money. There's also a report out there, but with higher gas prices, you just mentioned gas, filling up your own car that people are putting these gas prices on their credit card, which contributes to further debt. You agree with that? Sure, I mean, it's that's a scary stat if we think about it, Bill. I mean, that's tw the, the largest credit card debt increase in 23 years. Wow, guys, it's crazy. I mean, not even to mention inflation rising and us sending our taxpayer dollars to Ukraine. Don't even get me started on that. Is that even in the crash of 2008, when real estate prices went down, stock market went down, it was a wilder time than now. Even then, 
people didn't turn to their credit cards like they are now. And, and so that it, that's a scary stat. And banks, you got folks, you got to remember out there, these banks are not your friends. No. Nope. I think when someone says, "Hey, I'm here to help you," at 28 percent or 18 yeah. percent, that is not your friend. No, they don't. Hey, nice to meet you. Hey, you want to open up a credit card? Hey, congratulations, you qualify. They want your money. They want your money. Don't resist or don't fall for it. Resist the temptation. Act, you should resist. <laughs> uh, this stuns me. 61% of Americans, talking about 157 million American adults, are living paycheck to paycheck. H have you 61%? That's insane, guys. Insane in the membrane. But I honestly don't blame them because the cost of living is so freaking high. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. I don't think they're the ones who are here to fix this. I think Donald John Trump is going to fix this situation. I've seen a number that high before. And I'm, David, all the advice you give and the people you talk to, how do we change that? You know, year in and year out, we run into the number 75, 78%, 76% of Americans are living with too much month left at the end of the money. And then dump a, a nine points. Too much month left at the end of the money what six percent inflation right on top of that that is a lot of it is your gas tank but a lot of it is also the milk and the bread and the things that the gas prices and labor prices have driven up in the stores and, and now you've got regular families that um that were probably doing okay they, they maybe were not it's pushing them up over that and so yeah it's pretty scary that that uh even with good wage increases of five percent that doesn't keep up with a 9.6% inflation rate. Yeah, that's so right. uh, the Biden administration's got some real issues. Mm -hmm. uh, did one last thing here, Dave, and I, I always ask you this question. You take calls from viewers all over the country every day. Uh, w what are they telling you about the inflation crunch hitting them? I think they're most concerned about the gas prices, honestly. Uh, we're hearing that pretty regularly. A and the house prices. Uh, the good news is house prices are leveling off. Uh, we had a 29% increase in house prices in, in uh, 2020. And in 21, we had a 18%. This year, it looks like we're going to be 7 or 8 and we're projecting in 23 only about a 3 or 4% increase in prices. So, I mean, it's just really not sustainable. I mean, look at this. Dave Ramsey actually said gas prices are 100% Biden's fault. So Dave Ramsey's exposing the truth. Thumbs up the videos, guys. Share it on Facebook. Let's go, go, go. Crazy. There's new analysis from the Urban Institute that shows wages are increasing, but not enough to keep up with soaring gas and rent prices, hitting low and middle income families particularly hard. For more on what people can do to help ease the burden, let's bring in our favorite personal finance expert, Dave Ramsey, author of the book, Baby Steps Millionaires. Good to have you, sir. Uh, the average gas prices, I mean, that's the thing that's really hurting people. It's four twenty three a gallon on average here. We've been making fun of Trace a little bit because it's over $6 there in California. But really, food also being on the rise at 8%. And gas, you know, gasoline, but energy costs, everything up. How should people... Or are they raising gases so they'll incentivize you to go out and buy a $50,000 electric car and, oh, we're helping the environment. But yeah, we're just, don't, don't mind, don't mind them mining lithium batteries, all right? Because that's, that's great for the environment. We'll figure out a way to manage... What a joke. Electric cars suck. You want to drive an electric car? Might as well go... <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to say what I'm going to say, but I hate electric cars. In the next coming months. Well, inflation is not fair. And the cost of electricity is going up too. Because it picks on folks with lower incomes and middle lower incomes more than it picks on other people because necessities is what it's new is beating up your food, bread, water, meat, gas, and so it, it's it makes it even tougher on those. And with the wage changes, the biggest wage changes, we're seeing some wage changes go way up. A lot of people are making more money than they've ever made in their lives. But again, it's usually not at the lower end of the spectrum. And so this is this whole storyline is much more tough on somebody making 30,000 bucks a year than somebody making 130 a year. Uh, so this is an inconvenience if you're making 130 a year and you get on a budget, you tighten up, you watch it, you're going to be okay. But when you're making 30 a year, 35 a year, this is tough. 
And, and so you know, you've got to you got to batten down the hatches, and you got to make every dollar count with a written game plan. And you got to start looking at what you can do to participate in some of these careers that are going up instead of just riding along here at the bottom on the wage scale because it's a tough place to live in this market. It's like survival of the fittest out there, guys. It's like if you're you're in order now to have a normal life. You got to be making like six figures a year, hundred thousand bucks. Oh yeah. By the way, if you're in California making a hundred thousand bucks a year, you're basically poor at this point. I mean, it's crazy. You people are going to have to be making a million bucks a year just to, just to own a home. <laughs> it's like, where do we, where does this end? It's not, it's not going to end well. I'll, I'll guarantee y'all that guys. That's why we need Donald John Trump to come and fix this mess. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because, you know, I read a lot of these things about how to beat inflation, Dave, and, and a lot of the common denominators in these things say things like uh, buy a house, don't rent, get more fuel-efficient car or electric car, buy long-lasting durable products, and as you just said, the people who are getting hurt by this, they can't afford durable products, they can't afford to buy an electric vehicle, right, or buy a home, so, so they're kind of left out of these tips. What would you tell those people? Well, again, I, I'm going to first make every dollar I can behave uh, by doing that old written budget. And that sounds like a broken record coming from Dave Ramsey. But when you make your money on paper, do what it's supposed to do, you do feel like you've gotten a raise. Uh, because what you're doing is you're prioritizing things over, th you know, you quit buying things you don't have to have. And, and it's really, really tight. And the, the horrible thing about this whole situation is this is the same group that got hit the hardest with the pandemic. I mean, their servers, there are the maids at the hotel. Yeah, it's the janitorial service. Uh, I mean, these are uh, frontline, entry-level construction workers, and it's the, it's it's the very people that this is the second thing now to to hit them. They got hit with the pandemic. Now they're getting hit with this Biden inflation at the gas pump, and it's the gas pump is one hundred percent on Biden's desk. It's one hundred percent his fault. Whoa! Boom, shakalaka. And you know what they said with Kamala Harris? Oh yeah, she wants to give twenty. 25,000 bucks to uh, to use to Amer to Americans or honestly probably illegals too. I don't know. I haven't looked into it so I could be wrong on that front, but she wants to give 25,000 bucks to people to buy their first home. And one a reason why I said maybe it's for illegals is because the qualifications are that is that their parents cannot own a home either. It's like so weird how they're Giving 25k to people who like, I don't know, it just seems weird, but But it's like, you know, that's not really it's only that's helping the rich get richer if you own a house Guess what going on to your house the value of your price is gonna go up Right because you're causing more demand and the supply stays the same It's not like you're building you should be building more houses not giving people more money to buy the pre-existing homes Because that's gonna drive up the house prices are gonna create bidding wars I mean, it's crazy, guys. Absolutely crazy. One of the stories I saw it took place in your neck of the woods, actually. It was a young man who uh, was being interviewed at a gas station, and he said that he actually had to quit his job because it was costing him more to go to work than he was making. Wow. You mentioned some of the careers that are paying more. Where do you steer people to look for those types of things? Well, this is, you know, what this is, is anytime any of us go through hard times like this, and I've been there, I went broke in my 20s, lost everything, and got the opportunity to start over. So, what you have, it makes you reassess, okay, what I've been doing is leaving me vulnerable to these types of things. And so I've got to explore, you know, getting into a trade in an apprentice level, uh, because, you know, I mean, we've got diesel mechanics and welders making 100K out there and so it's possible but that's a, again that's a, a, a an apprentice level type thing or a certification level type thing it could be you move into technology but you can't just say i'm going to try to subsist at the entry level uh you know, a retail job that's not paying me enough to eat, not paying me a living wage, you have to make changes. Now, that does indicate we've got systemic problems out there, but socialism not going to be the end. That's a Ferrari. Someone's filling up a Ferrari. And <laughs> this is, isn't that a Ferrari light, guys? Systemic problems out there, <coughs> but 
socialism not going to be the answer to that. You fixing your situation and putting yourself on a different career trajectory is really your long-term answer. So the next time some storm like this comes at you, you're more the third pig in the brick house rather than the one in the straw house. <laughs> I have no idea what Dave Ramsey said at the end there, but hey. I really like this guy. He helped save my life. I mean, I, I got out of credit card debt because of him. I paid off my credit cards. I paid off my car debt. I will never go back into debt. Dave Ramsey really fixed up my life. Uh, my mental health too because my mental health was going down the gutter because of my financial health. I was able to get back up on my feet, save up enough money to purchase my home and achieve, I believe I was able to achieve the American dream. And a lot of it, I would say about 99% I have to, to, to owe to, to Dave Ramsey. Obviously, I had to put in the work, but he really, you know, it was a big change of heart, change of mindset. You know, it says in the Bible, it says in Scripture, the borrower is slave to the lender, okay? I think the FICO score is a scam. I don't, I don't look at my FICO score, guys, all right? And the less you are worried about borrowing money, the less you need to worry about your FICO score, okay? I... I don't borrow money anymore, so I don't ever need to show anybody that I have a, oh, here's my FICO score, okay? And when I went to, to apply for a mortgage, they did not even ask me about my credit score. Oh, how many credit cards do you have? They didn't care. I feel like this whole stuff is just made, it's meant to trap you. That's why I will not buy, I will not use a credit card anymore. Number one, I don't need it, but number two, I don't wanna support the system that manipulates people. Credit card companies manipulate people they get people trapped into these credit cards. They're paying them an absorbent amount of interest. That's what they do. They the whole Chase Freedom card. Yeah, they there's a reason they call it the Freedom card to make people think they're free when in reality they're trapped. Right? I'm very heavily opinionated on it. I know probably many of you guys use credit cards. Personally, I do not. I don't borrow money. I only use cash. Um and yeah, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little heated there at the end, but. I mean, hey, it really kicked my butt into gear. If you have any problems with finances or whatever, Dave Ramsey worked for me, and I don't know. I think I think he's smart. I think he's a good guy, and I think he's calling out the BS of the Biden and Harris administration. So let me know your thoughts. Take care. We'll talk to you soon, guys.